Hello folks and welcome back to the final video lecture on flexure of the lithosphere for the geodynamics course. In this video lecture we're going to look at examples of flexure of lithospheric plates and in particular we're going to look at some examples as applied to the island chain of Hawaii. So we're going to see basically two different examples. Uh, one that we'll refer to as a solid elastic plate and the second um, as a broken elastic plate, and you'll see what those two uh, things mean in just a moment. As a reminder, we're looking at cases here of uh, bending of the lithosphere, and uh, as you'll recall from the previous video lecture, that means we have taken into account the fact that we've displaced the asthenosphere beneath the place where we loaded the lithospheric plate, and so we have this restoring force that's going to result in a slightly different form for our deflected um, elastic plate compared to what we had previously. And the treatment that we're going to do is basically to consider the Hawaiian Islands as a line load minus V naught at position X equals zero and assume that there's no um, load along the length of the elastic plate and there's no axial or longitudinal force. So in other words, Q is equal to zero and P equals zero, which resulted in our sort of simplified general equation for deflection of the oceanic lithosphere that is shown down here before and something we saw in the previous video lecture. Now, in the case of a solid elastic plate, we can calculate the deflection um, to look something like this. Skipping over the derivation for this, um, there's a fair amount of algebra involved, but uh, the main point I want you to take away is uh, the difference in the form of this equation and its equivalent for the broken plate. So here we have our deflection, W being equal to a term W naught, times e to the minus x over alpha, times the cosine of x over alpha plus the sine of x over alpha. So there's a few things in here that we haven't seen before, one of them being w naught and the second one being alpha. We've seen x, of course, previously as varying along the length of our plate. So w naught, what is that? Well, it's simply the maximum deflection, and that's something that can be calculated by the magnitude of the shear force v naught times alpha cubed divided by 8d, where d is the flexural rigidity. That again is something that is a material property for the lithospheric plate. And alpha is something that's called the flexural parameter. You can see here that it's equal to 4 times d, again there's that flexural rigidity, times the difference in density between the mantle and water times g, and that is taken to the 1 fourth power or taking the fourth root of that term. So that's how we get our alpha. And so with alpha and w naught then we can plug things in here and we have a relatively simple equation for calculating the deflection. So what does it look like? Well if you plug in some numbers here, um, some alphas and w naughts and things like that, this is what you see for your deflection of a solid elastic plate. And so here at the position x equals zero is where our load is applied, and so the amount of deflection here is greatest uh, in terms of w divided by w naught. You can see that the deflection here is equal to one, of course, that's where the deflection w is equal to w naught, the maximum. And then as you move away from there, the plate is deflected less and less, and actually you see this bulge that forms here between a uh, distance of x over alpha um, between you know, maybe 2.3 and about 4.5, you can see there's this region that's warped upward. And so that's what's called the four bulge, and this is something that comes about uh, as a direct result of the fact that we've displaced the mantle beneath where we've applied this load, and so that restoring force has actually warped the elastic plate upward. So in the simple cases that we had taken before, if I was to apply a simple load to the end of my ruler, in the air, it's floating in uh, in air that's not going to exert any significant restoring force from my deflecting this ruler downward. And so all I see in the picture of the ruler that I have here is its deflection 
downward. I don't see any kind of up warping. So that's something that comes from the displacement of the asthenosphere. We can calculate the height of the Forbulge, um, which is this WB term as being minus W naught times E to minus pi. And the position where the four bulge will be located is simply pi times alpha. So you can see why this alpha term, this um, flexural parameter, is kind of a useful thing. All right, so this is our case for a solid elastic plate. And you might be asking yourself, when does something like this apply to the Earth's lithosphere? Well, generally speaking, you can model a loading of the lithosphere uh, as a solid elastic plate. In any case, where the mechanical strength or the elastic strength of the lithosphere is not significantly affected by fracture zones or volcanism uh, or major faults that cut, for instance, all the way through the crust. And so some examples of this would consider things like um, loading of a stable continental interior by ice sheets, something that's certainly very relevant in uh, Fenoscandia, where we have basically a shield setting with a very stable uh, continental interior where ice was deposited uh, and fairly thick about 10,000 years ago. Seamounts and oceanic islands like we see for the case in Hawaii, and I put an asterisk here. I'll mention that, um, why I put that there after we talk about the broken plate case. And then uh, you can also think about cases where you've loaded a passive margin or something like that by uh, river delta and, and fluvial sedimentation along a passive margin. Okay, so now let's take a look at the case of bending of the lithosphere where the plate is considered a quote-unquote broken plate. And so this is a scenario that might apply where you think that the elastic strength is not um, continuous, is, is not um, equal on either side of where the load is applied. In other words, you can't transmit elastic bending stresses from one side to the other. Uh, and so in that case, it's more appropriate to consider a broken plate where this end of the plate is, uh, is free to be deflected independent of what would be happening on the other side. In this case, we can calculate a slightly simpler equation for the deflection. Again, we have this W naught, uh, the maximum deflection times e to the minus x over alpha times the cosine of x over alpha. So that sine term is now gone that was there in the previous um, equation. Here our maximum deflection is um, it's similar v naught times alpha cubed over 4d. So that's similar to what we had uh, before. Here's what the plate looks like when it's been uh, bent in the case of a broken plate. And so you can see here again that the maximum deflection occurs at x equals zero. And in this case, the plate, instead of flattening out and being actually horizontal at x equals zero, it's the steepest at x equals zero. So it's, it's got the most deflection at that point, but it's also the steepest. And it rises then up to the four bulge in a slightly closer position to um, where the four bulge occurred in the previous scenario. So the, the form is kind of similar, but uh, along the x-axis, the four bulge emerges or, or, or the elevations um, exceed uh, or have a, a negative deflection, I guess, um, at about x equals 1.6 or x over alpha equals about 1.6, whereas before you had to get over two before that occurred. Otherwise, the form in you know the size of the four bulge is comparable, maybe a little bit wider in this case. The height of the four bulge we can calculate just like we did before. That's this WB term, where it's equal to the maximum deflection times e to the minus three pi over four times the cosine of three pi over four, and that's going to occur at location uh, XB equals three pi over four times alpha. So again, previously I think we had x be equal to pi times alpha, so that's our slightly closer um, location of the four bulge. When should we consider the cases of broken elastic plates as being applicable? Well, you can apply that in a case where the mechanical strength or the elastic strength of the lithosphere has been affected by fracture zones or volcanoes or 
major fault systems. So examples of this would be things like where we have uh, deep sea trenches and subduction zones, so where oceanic plates are being subducted down. Um, in that case, the uh, end of the plate it can be considered free and, uh, and able to be deflected without bending back up. I've put seamounts and oceanic islands on here again. This is the reason that I had the asterisk before, because, for instance, in Hawaii, there's some debate about whether the volcanism itself may affect the elastic strength of the oceanic lithosphere there. So the question is, is it better to consider that plate as, as continuous uh, across where the islands are loading it, or is it actually mechanically sort of broken at that point because of the um, significant weakening, thermal weakening of the plate that might prohibit transmitting elastic stresses from one side of the Hawaiian Islands to the other. The other case where this can be applicable would be things like foreland basins where you have big faults and um, you've basically cut through a big amount of the uh, continental crust and might have loading of uh, a plate that can basically be flexed downward without bending back up. All right, so that's it for our flexure of the lithosphere uh, and our two examples from, uh, from Hawaii. So go ahead, like normal, take your quiz, and we'll see you for the next lecture set about heat transfer processes.